It's Monaco time! The crown jewel, the pinnacle of spectacle, and actually one of our more boring races on the F1 calendar, but this one is all about the history and everything surrounding the race. Monaco is the race that new and old fans alike know. It's the one we've all dreamed about racing at. It's the one we know like the back of our hands. It was first held way back in 1929. The track is of course a street circuit, the street circuit, and is extremely narrow. You can barely fit two cars side by side on this one, and the barriers come up on drivers very quickly. Overtaking here is very difficult, so it tends to lead to a bit of processional race. This makes qualifying extremely important, as whoever qualifies on pole tends to win the race. The race itself does run for 78 laps around the short track, and it only has one DRS zone running down the pit straight into turn one. The race last year was actually a bit of a weird one. Charles Leclerc qualified on pole, but in his final qualifying run, he crashed his car into the barriers so badly that he was not able to take the starting grid on race day. So Verstappen, who qualified in second, started out in front and went on to win. This was also the race where Bottas came in for a pit stop and never came out. Some say he is still there to this day. He had a machined wheel nut in the end. Will we get such huge mistakes this time out? Hmm, who knows? Last year was Verstappen's first win at the track, but we also have winners in Hamilton, Ricardo, Vettel and Alonso on the grid. Historically, McLaren are the most successful team around Monaco with 15 wins. Imagine if they could pull off a win again this time, that would be nuts. Last time out in Spain, we had tons of action and a huge swing in the championship. Leclerc looked certain for a comfortable win and to extend his championship lead, but he had a mechanical failure leaving Verstappen to take the win and the lead in the championship for the very first time this season. We also saw a revival from Mercedes with their upgrades. It didn't look like they could compete with the Red Bull and Ferrari just yet, but they certainly made a big step in the right direction. So will they be a threat here where outright speed doesn't matter so much? Our driver standings currently has Verstappen on 110 points in first place. Leclerc on 104 points in second place and Perez a little way back on 85 points in third place. So we are seeing a bit of a two horse race developing here at the front. In the Constructors Championship we have Red Bull on 195 points, Ferrari on 169, nice, and Mercedes on 120. They're not out of this yet in that Constructors fight. This week has been a little light on news. I think most people are still reeling from the action-packed Spanish race we had and trying to digest the upgrades we saw. Of course, every single team except Haas brought upgrades to the last race, so there's a lot of data to go over. There was one bit of small news that I saw this week though, and it'll be upsetting, but probably unsurprising for Ricardo fans. McLaren CEO Zach Brown has come out and said Ricardo is not meeting the expectations McLaren expect of him. I don't think that really shocks anyone. After all, he has been comprehensively beaten by Norris in their time together. However, that story could develop more as we move close to the driver tour later in the season. Team and driver to watch time. Driver to watch is an easy one this time out. It has to be right. It's Charles Leclerc. He's a monogas driver in the Monaco Grand Prix. How could we not? He's also seemingly the fastest driver over a one lap distance. With that being so important in this race, he's the guy to beat. Team to watch is a little trickier. I went with Mercedes last time out due to their upgrades and that worked out pretty well. So do you think I should go with McLaren for the same reason? They made 10 upgrades last race and Norris was ill last time out but still performed pretty well. So I'm excited to see how they get on here as well. Plus we got Ricardo with his public dressing down. So hopefully that'll inspire something from him at a track where he's won at previously. We'll see. What do you guys think? Is Monaco one you really look forward to these days? Let me know in the comments and over on social media at Race Report Pod. Feel free to subscribe and I will catch you on Sunday for the race review.